Yeah. See the times when, when we're going through. Yeah. Yes, sir. That it's really trying and are we going to be obedient to what God says? That's right. Today we're going to be coming out of John chapter 21. This is the third time that Jesus makes his appearance to his disciples after his resurrection. And it, to me, I found this, this chapter to be so enlightening and so powerful. Because what happens midway through the chapter is such a poignant part of who Jesus is and a part of the ministry that he's creating. So, if you need a title or anything for this, it's going to be, let Jesus fix you breakfast. Let him fix you breakfast. See, in, in this chapter, the disciples have been going through a, a nighttime experience. They've been going through everything that they have believed right. has been shaken. Mm -hmm. All of that they have been going through, this ministry following this man named Jesus has come to a head mm -hmm. because he's been crucified. Yeah. He's no longer with them, even though they know he's resurrected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to them, it's what now? Yeah. What do I do now? I've been obedient. I've done what I was supposed to do. What now? Yeah. What do I need to do now? I've, I've, I've said what you told me to say, God. I've done what you told me to do. Mm -hmm. And now I feel lost mm -hmm. in the midst of my obedience. Mm -hmm. I feel lost. Mm -hmm. I, don't know what, I don't know what to do next. Yeah. I, need I listen for your voice. Mm -hmm. I even listen for the whisper. And I feel like I don't hear anything. But yet I'm going to be obedient to what you told me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to uh, John chapter 21. Let's start at verse 1. It said, and I'm reading from the Christian Standard uh, Bible. After this, Jesus re revealed himself again to his disciples by the sea of Ter Terabias? Tiberius. Tiberius, excuse me, thank you. He revealed himself this way. So here, here uh, John is saying, hey, Jesus, go reveal himself. But see, there is a process to him revealing himself. All right, He's not just going to say, hey, here I am. Uh -huh. You're going to have to discern in order to find him in the midst of what you're going through. Come on, man. Come on. Uh, verse 2 says, Simon Peter Thomas, called twin, Nathaniel from Canaan of Galilee, Zebedee's sons and two of the other disciples were together. So Peter said, Simon Peter says to them, I'm going fishing. Boys, I don't know what else to do. I'm going back to what I originally know. What I've been trying to do. What my what what I have what I've been taught to do since I was a young boy. I'm going back to what I know because I don't know anything else. He said, I'm going fishing. And so the boys looked at him and said, you know what? We coming with you. They told him, we coming with you. And they went out to the boat to get in the boat. But that night they caught nothing. But before we go any further, I want to stick right there. The boys said, we going with you. See, when you are a natural anointed leader of Christ, you can't say what I do don't affect anybody else. Because what people will do is if they see you as a leader and that anointing that is on your life draws people, wherever you go, they're going to follow you. They're going to follow you. So you can't say, oh, it's just me. It don't, it don't affect anybody else. Those who are looking at you, those who God has appointed to you are going to say, I'm going to go with you. Wherever you go, I'm going. So you can't say, God, I don't, I don't care anymore. I don't know what else to do. I'm just going to do my own thing. Because guess what? When you do your own thing, it's some people that's behind you that's doing their own thing just right along with you. You can't say, I don't feel like being a leader today. 
It don't work that way. I don't feel like my calling today. It don't work that way. When you have been anointed and appointed and you receive that calling, that calling is upon your life. People that you don't even think acknowledges your calling will recognize it. That's right. And they'll follow you. You can look back at them and say, don't follow me. What you following me for? Because you're a natural leader. We can't help but to follow you. It's within us to follow the one who's anointed. It's within us to follow the one who's leading the way. It's within us to follow the one who has a vision. Now, if you choose to ignore the vision and go your own way, that's between you and God. Because there are people following you. You might be saying, I'm just going fishing. I'm just going out to the boat. They say, okay, cool, we're going with you. Why? Because you're a leader. You've been anointed and appointed to this position. You're a leader. Even though you may be in a situation of, God, I don't hear you. God, I don't feel you. God, I don't know what to do. God did not retract his calling on your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on now. It's still there. Mm-hmm. Like you said. I don't feel good today. I got to hear it. It don't make no difference. The anointing is still on you. That's right. Regardless of how you feel, uh-huh. it ain't no you they pick it up today and do it tomorrow. It's on you from now on. Uh-huh. Now you might say, well, today I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I, 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 I'm going fishing. It don't make no difference. It's on you. They know it's on you. So they're going too. Because uh-huh. wherever you go and whatever you do, we want some of it too. Mm-hmm. Right. Now you may be going fishing, but now, but the Lord may have something else in store for you to do. So we don't want to miss it. Right. We yes, going. Sir. We know it, like you say, I know it's on you. You may not see it right now, but it's on you mm-hmm. to do the will of God's work. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna do it. I mean, God give you a vision. Mm-hmm. I don't want vision. Vision's still there. That's right. Eventually you're gonna come around and say, man. That was what God told me to do. Uh-huh. If I had to did what he had said me to do, this thing would have moved a whole lot quicker and uh-huh. a whole lot faster. Uh-huh. But because I decided, give up and quit. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. <laughs> I want to get ahead of it. <laughs> but the thing about it is, like you said, they had been following Jesus. Uh-huh. He had been teaching them all the time. All right. You were teaching. Uh-huh. Now you teach your class. Uh-huh. You prepare the work. All the time you teach it. Now it comes from the test. Mm-hmm. I'm going to walk out the room. Mm-hmm. It's up to y'all whether you do it or you don't do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I've already taught you. Mm-hmm. I know you know it. Mm-hmm. But now you want to use the excuse. What? 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 Because what? Jesus is letting them know you've seen everything I've done. Mm-hmm. I've taught you everything you do. Mm-hmm. Now it's time for you to stand up, put your pants on. Be a big boy and go do what I called you to do. But you now you want to make excuses. Well, Lord, we need you now. We need you to touch that man. Mm-hmm. We need you to minister to that man. We mm-hmm. were just watching. Yeah. We were just, Jesus, no, 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 no. This ain't a watch thing. Mm-hmm. This is a catch thing. Right. I know y'all call it, mm-hmm. but you're just fearful. Right. Yeah. But once you get started and get going and knowing that the Holy Spirit leads you, you're going to find out that you're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes that's the way we are. Mm-hmm. We, 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 we've been prepared. Bishop preparing us. Yeah, we're going to preach. I'm teaching you how to preach. I'm teaching you how to minister. Mm-hmm. One day I ain't going to be here. Mm-hmm. Pastor, mm-hmm. what you, what you going to give? You going to give a word to the people? Mm-hmm. No, I'm going to be busy. Come on. Mm-hmm. Bishop, what, what bishop is mm-hmm. what, what tree is there? Mm-hmm. It ain't tree is there. It's your day. Mm-hmm. It's for you to step up and do what you're supposed to do. Now, mm-hmm. you've got the training. You got everything that you need. I know God has spoke to you. I know God has talked to you. Now you got to walk out of that. You got to come out of that field and do what God called you to do. Right. It's still there for you to do. Mm-hmm. So that was they, that was them. Three years. He was just teaching them. He was just doing everything, mm-hmm. and they was following him. But he was telling them that the, the day gonna come when I'm no longer here. Mm-hmm. That's right. Now it's gonna be up to you because the people gonna know. Because they're gonna say, when when y'all want to follow Jesus. 
Come on. Yeah. Were y'all following him? Mm -hmm. When y'all were there when he was preaching? Uh -huh. When y'all were there when he touched the man and he touched the woman and he uh -huh. touched his children? Wasn't y'all there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, y'all do the same thing. I'm, I'm giving it to you now to take over and make disciples of others and make disciples of them. Keep this thing going until I come again. Mm -hmm. Now you got your position. Because like you said, once he chooses you and gives you the calling, that calling ain't going to stop because you say you don't want to go. Right. Well, I'm going to fish today. I'm going to wash my car. Don't make a difference. Well, we'll just go with you. Yeah. We'll yeah. go with you. We'll help you wash your car. Yeah. Wash it. Because if we help you wash it, so somewhere in the washing, God's going to show you something. You're right. Somewhere in the fishing, God's going to show you something. Mm -hmm. Somewhere you going down the road, and they know, they say, well, mm, I'm going to Mr. Travis. Mm -hmm. I know that boy's annoying. Mm -hmm. Boy, he gonna he gonna cut grass. Craig, can I cut grass with you? Mm -hmm. Because see, somewhere in the somewhere in the middle of cutting that grass, God gonna talk to you. There's gonna be a revelation. There's gonna be yeah. a revelation. Mm -hmm. Hey, brothers, I'm glad y'all come. But this is what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. We might well stop cutting this grass because we got something else we got to do mm -hmm. right now. Somebody else come along cutting this grass. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Hey, go, go ahead. question. Did that come along with, because it's, it's on my mind, it's saying when, when it's time to uh, give a word, when I say I got a gift, and if I'm doing the same thing that person doing, how can I give that gift? How can I let my gift come forth if I'm doing the same thing they doing? So, okay, it, it, that, it, it needs to be me still doing it just because I, I feel like I want to do that. I, you know, I, I can't do that because I, I got to still be how they gonna hear me if I'm doing what they do? So I gotta be, I gotta stay in my place and not just, just be, still be firm what what I already been taught. And stay stand, stand fast on it. To stand on that instead of just trying to uh, 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 lose my gift because it ain't, just because in my day out, that don't mean I can lose my gift. Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, they doing what they doing and I feel like, well, Maybe I need to do what they don't, you know. No, that ain't, it don't work like that. Cause then they not gonna hear me. How you gonna, you gonna tell somebody you doing the same thing they doing? So you got to come around and say, uh uh, I got to stand. Lord, keep me strong. Keep mm -hmm. me strong where I would go fall off. Keep me strong. Give me the strength to hold on. Mm -hmm. And not, so I can be a witness for you. So that I can be a witness and tell them they can come out from my mother and dad. They can be delivered from it and they can stand. That's the most important thing they can stay. So in that, we, we have to be able to ask the Lord to set the stage. Yeah. Yes. And set the atmosphere for right. it. Right. So that they will be willing mm -hmm. to accept. It's almost like you, you got me a word last week. It's like when you were saying um, about how God be moving you out of a place and you still want to stay there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and your work is done there. spiritually can be two different places. And it's your flesh that's torn apart. Because we have to think about it like um, like Pastor, as you were saying, you were talking and, and even though emotionally you may feel this way 
But spiritually, you're here. Yeah. Emotionally, you may feel like I am I'm dead tired. I don't feel like doing anything. But the Spirit is saying, but I need you to go further. Yeah. That's why in, you, you remember in the song, Jesus Loves Me, it says, when I am weak, he is strong. So it's him that's taking over. Yes. When you allow, you allow the Lord to say, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't feel like going here. If you want me to be over at that place at that time, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how you going to do it. You're going to have to do it. And then before you know it, you're like, I don't know how I got here, y'all. I don't know how I got here. It's because the Lord took over. And sometimes, well, all the times, we need to allow the Lord to just take over. Because see, it, even though we may feel weak, we may feel tired, it, in verse... Um, Verse 3, it said, the boys told him, hey, we're going fishing with you. So they, to add insult to injury, after feeling bad, after going through that, that nighttime feeling of, God, I don't feel you. I don't, I don't see where you are. I don't, I don't get I'm going to back to what I know. Yeah. At the end of verse 3, it says, at the end of the night, they caught nothing. So after me feeling as bad as I done felt after following Christ mm. and doing what he told me to do. Mm. I went back to what I know to do mm. and nothing prospered there either. Right. Mm. Nothing came from that either. Mm. Can you imagine how they felt? Mm. Peter, we, we, we don't went fishing with you. <laughs> we still following you. But still nothing's coming from yeah. There's no fruit from that either. I already feel bad. Now I feel worse. Because here Peter is, I just thought I was just going back to being me. Now these boys, they getting on my nerves because they following me. Now they blaming me because we've been fishing all night and ain't nothing come up. Could you imagine that feeling? And they looking at, they still saying that, Peter, you sure we should be out here? I didn't invite y'all to come. I just told you where I was going. <laughs> y'all decided to follow me. Can you imagine how he felt? Now remember, this is the same Peter who denied Christ three times. So on top of everybody following him, after he done denied Christ, he done said, I don't know him. Now they following him, looking behind, looking at him, relying on him. Have you ever been in a place to where everybody looking at you? Wanting you to do something. Wanting you to say something. I know you got a word from the Lord. I know you I know you pray. And you talk to the Lord and He talked to you. But you in a place with God where God, I really don't want to talk to you right now. Because I'm ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed of what I've done. Of who I've become. After everything I promised you, after all I've known of you, after everything you've done to me and you've done for me, yet I still counted you out. But Jesus never said, I take back my calling from your life. He never said, I take back that anointing that I put on your life. So here the disciples are. They still see that anointing. They still see the obedience that he had for Christ. And so here he is. So in verse 4, when daybreak came, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not know it was Jesus. How many times in your situation have you gotten so deep into it? That you don't recognize Jesus when he's standing right in front of you. You're so deep into what you're going through. You're so caught up in what is going on in your life. That you don't recognize Jesus when he's there. You keep calling on him, Jesus, 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 I need you to come. I need you to be here. I need you to do something. God, I need you to let me know something. We're in John 21. We're in chapter 5. I mean, 
Verse 5. And we're saying, Jesus, I need something from you. I need you to do something. I need you to speak something. And he's standing right there. And in verse 6, it says, uh, I'm sorry, let me finish up verse, uh, verse 4 and 5. Uh, when daylight came, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Verse 5 says, friends, some, some uh, translations say children. Jesus came to him, them. You didn't have any fish. You don't have any fish, do you? Now, this is how good some of us think. You seen we just got off the boat. You seen we done been out there all night. And you see that we ain't got no fish in our nets. Now, why are you going to ask me if I caught anything? Can't you see what I'm going through right now? Can't you see what I'm dealing with? Why are you going to ask me something stupid like that? I know y'all ain't felt that way, but I, 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 I don't feel that way before. Why are you asking me about the obvious stuff? Ain't you got this taken care of yet? Ain't you done dealt with that? You still here? You still? If it was any different, I would have been the first one to tell you about it. But it's everything is still the same. You know it's the same. Why are you asking me? But here he is. This is Jesus talking to you. What if Jesus is asking you about your situation? And you're like, you know what my situation is. But you don't recognize that that's Jesus asking you. You don't recognize that it's Jesus asking. He just want to see what your mindset is. Uh -huh. Are you, are you about to cuss him out? Mm. Or are you going to be willing to listen to, uh, to do the rest of verse 5 and just answer no? No, I didn't catch you. Though. I didn't catch you. Though. Now, see, there are different versions of saying no. Yeah. There's a no, I didn't catch nothing. Mm. There's the no. Now get out my face. <laughs> and then there's Being nice, I got a smile on my face, but no. I really want to say more to you, but I'm trying to be obedient, but no. I didn't, I didn't catch anything. So Jesus says to them, go back out there and cast your net on the other side. And you'll find, and you'll find some of the fish. Instead of them going back and being like, okay, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're thinking about. I don't know what your, if you know my situation, because we done been out here all night long, and now you want me to go back out here again? Instead, they went back and they did it. Yeah. And they caught a haul that was bigger than they ever imagined. So what if God is saying to you, I know your situation. But I want you to go back to where you came from. I just want you to go back. And I want you to reposition yourself. See, it, it, as I was reading this, and the Lord, he was, I was like, okay, God, how can I best describe this? And so, have you ever went and applied for a job? and you never heard anything back from him, and you went back to the same place, and you said, I'm gonna apply for the same job, but I'm gonna reword some stuff in my application. Ooh. And when you reword some stuff in your application, they caught, we, we've been looking for just that type of person that you described in this application. What if God is saying, I want you to go back to the same place that you were before and rework some things? Or what if God says, that place that you went and applied for, you were in the right place, but you applied for the wrong position. What if God is saying, you asked for him to give you one position, but he really wants you to have a position that's higher than that. So you were in the right place, but in the wrong position. 
And that's what Jesus was, was telling the disciples. You were in the right place, but you were in the wrong position to receive what I have for you. You were in the wrong position. Are you willing to go back to where you were, but to do it the way I tell you to do it this time? Are you too proud to say, I'm going to go back to where I left from to get what God has for me and to do it God's way? See, a lot of times we're doing it our own way. Yes. Remember, Peter went back to what he knew because that's what he knew. Yes. He decided to do it his own way. But when Jesus said, but go back and reposition yourself, then they caught more than they could ever imagine. They caught more than they could ever think of. If you continue to read on in the chapter, it even says they caught so much that they thought that the net would begin to break. But because it was what God had for them, the net didn't break. God is going to give you everything that he wants you to have, but it won't break you. It won't break you. So here they are. They're, th they're, they're like, okay. So at one point in verse 7, it says, the disciple, the one Jesus loved, said to Peter, that God had told us to go back out, that we didn't, we didn't recognize him, that was our Lord. That was Jesus. Sometimes we can be so into our situation, when we don't recognize Jesus, it takes somebody else to say, don't you know that had to be the Lord that told you to do that? That had to be the Lord. And when Peter came to the realization, that's my Jesus over there. See, it, it says in here, Peter had to tie his outer clothing around himself. Because he had been so busy working after he had repositioned himself to do what God said, what Jesus said to do. He had been working so much, he realized, you know what, I can't stay in what I already have on. I can't continue God's work being cute. I'm going to have to take off what I have on in order for me to move around and do what I need to do. And so he had to tie his clothes back together. And then he jumped out of the boat and ran to the shore to get to Jesus. See, when you're in a nighttime position where it seems like nothing is going your way, when you realize, hold on, that's Jesus right there. Let me stop what I'm doing. I know the boat is supposed to carry me to him, but I can't wait for the boat. I've been calling on my Jesus. And when I realize that my Jesus is here, I'm going to do everything I can to get to him. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I get to the one who has been, who has, I've been praying for, the one I've been calling on. And verse 9 it says, and when the boat got to the land, they saw a charcoal fire there. And they seen fish. And they seen bread. And so they brought all the fish that they had already caught. Notice this. Before they got to the shore, there was already fish there. So what you're looking for from God, God already has prepared for you. So after they bring everything, that they, see, they continue with what God, what Jesus had told them to do. Because they brought the fish, they brought it onto the shore. But then they say, hold on, Jesus, you already got, you got the fish right there. Everything that I asked you to do for me, you already got right here. But you still allow me to go out there and get this fish, even though you already got fish already set up for me. You got, hold on, I'm not understanding this. You already got for me, prepared for me what I'm already asking you for. But God is saying, I needed you to go out there so that you could see that you can do it so that you can have the confidence in knowing that God, you hear from God too and that you can be obedient too I just wanted to see if you were going to be obedient even though you felt like this is a midnight situation I don't feel you, I don't hear you but yet I'll be obedient to you God, I know what you told me to do in the past so I'm going to do that and I'm going to still be obedient to what you told me to, be, to do But God, everything I asked you for, you already have right there. You already have prepared for me. So in verse 12, Jesus said something so simple. 
after their night of realizing I followed Jesus, I've done it as he said, now I feel lost, now I feel like I can't hear him, now I feel like I can't feel him, but I'm going to be obedient to him. After that, all that time, and then they realized that was Jesus speaking to me the whole time. Yeah. Jesus said something so simple to me. He said, come and have breakfast. The breakfast that I have prepared for you. Yes. Come and have breakfast. See, whatever situation you're in right now, I don't care what stage you're in, whether you can hear him clearly or you feel like I don't hear you at all, God. Just to be obedient to him. Continue to be obedient. What he told you to do in the past, you continue to hold on to. If he tells you to go back to a place and rectify something and reposition yourself, do it. Why? Because at the end of the night, as daybreak begins to come, Jesus is saying, I got breakfast ready for you. You had a rough night. This has been a tough situation for you. You didn't know what to do. You didn't know where to turn. You even went back to your old ways. But you found yourself. And then you, you realized that it was me speaking to you. Now come have breakfast. I don't know about y'all, but after a rough night, the best thing that end up happening after a rough night is having somebody come and say, here go your breakfast. For the past two weeks, I'd have, I'd have been through something. After my surgery, they put me on medicine. The medicine that they put me on made me have panic attacks. I ended up with pneumonia. Felicia had to take me to the emergency room. They were like, Let, let's check out your heart. Let's see if it's a blood clot. Let's find out what's going on. Seemed like each night I had a panic attack. Ended up taking, y'all, yeah, you know how you you know how you're not a person that need to be on drugs. You get on the medicine. I I tell you, most nights I felt like I had three ladies. I was like, my goodness. And then I'm, I'm a person who sleeps with the TV on. Because it helps me, it helps me to relax. I, I, my wife don't understand that, but if my mind is on something else, it allows me to rest. So I, I was listening to the TV and they were talking about something on the TV and it got into my dream and I was like, I'm like oh Lord, I just don't, I don't, but it, it, even, even with all of that going on, for in the morning somebody to say, here go your breakfast, means so much. Why, why does that mean so much? Because it means somebody cared enough. Right here, Jesus said, I care enough. I've seen what kind of night you've had. I've seen the situation that you're going through. Let me lighten your load just a little bit. Let me take care of you just for this little thing. The importance of Jesus providing breakfast for them at this time is because they've gone through the ministry with Jesus. Everything that Jesus has gone through, they've gone through with him. Right. And for him to say, come have breakfast, to be the last act that he does for them before he ascends to heaven. He was saying, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for going through diligently. Thank you. Could you imagine God saying to you, I've seen everything you've been going through. Thank you for doing it with such grace. Thank you for doing it and keeping my name intact. Thank you for doing it, knowing that there is an end in sight. Will you allow God to fix you breakfast? after a long night of going through, not knowing what's coming next, not knowing who it is that's looking at you, not knowing where, where to go, what to say, knowing people looking at you, 
knowing people talking about you. But you saying, God, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to listen to you. Even though I feel like it's hard to hear what you're saying, hard to do what you're asking me to do. I'm still going to be your obedient. Yes. Will you allow God to fix your breakfast? I'm not going to finish out the chapter, but if you continue to read the chapter, besides Jesus fixing them breakfast, the last thing that he did before he ascended to heaven was he restored Peter. Peter had denied him three times. So Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? So for each time that Peter denied him, Jesus made him reaffirm yes. the love that he had. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to reaffirm the love that you have for Jesus? Mm -hmm. After he fixes you breakfast. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. Praise God.